studying out of the book of 1 Samuel, and we're going to continue until we finish it, right? Amen. 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 And uh, we are up to chapter 22, and we left off in verse 20. Now, before we, we read any more, uh, a while back, my daughter asked me if I had a parallel Bible, and I did, and uh, I gave it to her. And, oh, no. Uh, <laughs> now you mean. And then I realized after I gave it to her that I needed to be a parallel Bible. I like... Uh, I like to read out of the two different versions other than the King James. Uh, I like to read all of them, but uh, I like the uh, New American Standard and the Amplified Bible. And I got me a new one. So, Praise God! And it just has the two on it. The other one had four, and I like this one better. Uh, got it at ChristianBooks.com for $20. Yep. Praise God. So, awesome. 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 All in all. All right. Okay, so let's go to the scriptures here. Uh, now, last week we studied uh, the the, uh, the brutal slaughter of 85 priests by a guy named Dueg, and that was actually doing the work of Saul. So, and his henchman. Uh, huh? His henchman. His henchman, yes. And he did more than just that; he killed everybody in the town, all the women, the children, and the cats and the dogs and the cattle and sheep. And one priest escaped. His name was Abiathar. So we're going to start in verse 20. It says, And one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, named Abiathar, escaped and fled to David. Abiathar showed David that Saul had slain the Lord's priest. And David said unto Abiathar, I knew it that day when Doeg the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasioned the death of all the persons of thy father's house. Abide thou with me, fear not, for he that seeketh thy life seeketh my life, but with me shalt thou be in safeguard. Okay, now last week we studied some of those scriptures, and, and when I closed last week I said that Saul had become a type of Herod. Yes. And a type of Pharaoh that wanted to kill the Lord's anointed, wanted right. to keep the Savior from being born. Well, David was a type of Christ. The exact opposite. He wanted to preserve life and he wanted to help people. And you'll see in verse 23 uh, that, uh, that the Lord spoke to David to speak to Abiathar to give him some peace in right. the midst of this. I mean, could you imagine losing your father, your mother, all your friends, and all your pets and animals in Everything. one swoop? I mean... He needed somebody to help him. And David told him four things that I want to I want to break them down because the Lord helped me do some word studies here. And it's on the verse 23 where it says, Abide in me, fear not, for he that seeks my life seeks your life, but with me thou shalt be in safeguard. So the first one is to abide. Okay? And in Hebrew that word is yashab. Now, when I tell you about these Hebrew words, uh, you may understand, I want you to understand, a lot of times there might be many Hebrew words that are translated abide in English, okay? Right. Uh, so so if, I, if you do a word study and I say it's, it's yash, yashab, possibly some of these words were not yashab, but they all meant to abide, okay? Just in case you want to be picky with me. <laughs> okay, but in the King James Version, there was 437 times dwell was mentioned. Inhabitate, inhabitant, 21 times. To sit, 172 times. Abide, 70 times. Inhabit, 39 times. Down, 26 times. Remain, 23 times. In, 22 times. Tarry, 19 times. Set, 14 times. Continue, 5 times. Place, 7 times. Still, 5 times. Taken, 5 times. And then there was 23 miscellaneous translations. A total of 1,088 times this word is mentioned in the Old Testament. Now, you're going to notice I'm giving you some New Testament stuff, too. But God asked us to abide in Him. 
Now, I have some scriptures here. I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you the titles of them. And what I want you to do on this little, I'm going to call it an exercise, okay? Pick you out one of these things. Pick you out one verse, one of, one of these uh, verses about abide. And look them up. And you may pick the same one that somebody else does. Okay? The first one I showed here is Psalms 15, 1 and 2. It says, who shall abide? Psalms 61, 4 says, abide forever. Ab uh, Psalms 91, 1 says, abide under the shadow. Proverbs 19, 23 says, you're supposed to abide satisfied. John 14, 16 through 7, the comforter will abide with us. Amen. John 15, 7, you're supposed to abide in Christ. John 15, 10, abide in love. 1 Corinthians 7, 20, abide in your calling. 1 John 2, 27, uh, uh, the anointing abides where? In you. And 1 John 2, 28, abide at his coming. Okay, who's got one scripture out of that that they would like to share? Go ahead. I got St. John chapter 14, verse 16 and 17. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it saith him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Amen. And how long was that supposed to last, Brother Stars? Forever. 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 All right, the Comforter. How many people have met the Comforter? Amen. I Amen. have met the Comforter in my life. I need him. I need Amen. him in my life. Who else? Who's got some another scripture? Joyce? I have uh, abide in your calling, 1 Corinthians 7 20. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Amen. You're called, can't be broken. You're called, can't run away from it. Okay. Uh, abide in love, John 15 and 10. Let your love be perfect. Let your when you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in His love. I like that. They use the word remain there. That's a good word. The same thing as abide. You remain there. You're at peace there. Anybody else? I have 15 and 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. All right. Now, now we bring it in the Word of God, right? We have to abide in that Word of God daily. I believe it's daily, don't you? Amen. How many people feel like they, they've ripped themselves off when they get to read the Bible? Yeah. Amen. Get up late or whenever they have their Bible time. Okay, who else? Anybody else? Yes. Psalm 91 and 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. I'm going to sing that song this morning. El que habita al abrigo del Altissimo. See? Most of the medals. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's close. Hey! Yes, go ahead. Hey, she's here. Hi, go God. ahead, Sandra. Hi. Sorry. Proverbs 19.23, Abide satisfied. The fear of the Lord leads to life, and whoever, whoever has it rests satisfied. He will not be visited by harm. Rest satisfied. And that's an interesting thing. And, you know, I was asked this morning, did I have what kind of week I had? What did I say? A terrible week, praise the Lord. You know? <laughs> but, you know, God, we're still here, right? <laughs> yeah. But uh, we have to abide satisfied. We have to rest satisfied in His presence. Who else? Anybody else? Can I do 91 again? You certainly can't even read all of it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get crazy. Okay. okay, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. I just kind of like that. I love it. I love that scripture. I love that whole chapter. Brother Lemus, the former pastor here, that was his favorite chapter. And I'm at, I imagine I've been underneath his ministry. I've probably heard 50 sermons that were, every one of them different. Right. Every uh -huh. one of them different about the same chapter. Yeah. Who else? Anybody else got I something? I got the last one, Abide in His Coming, First uh, John 2.28. And now, little children, abide in Him that when He shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. So how is it important? How important is it that we abide in Christ? Amen. How Amen. important is it? At least 1,088 times. At least, <laughs> at least 1,088 times. And and I didn't even count the New Testament scriptures. That's right. I did not. Uh, I just went through them. Now, how many people in here like doing word studies? Now, 
I didn't get this from a, from a, a, a topical Bible. Okay? Right. Now, the best way to do a word study is incredible. Is you get your Strong's book out. Everybody got a Strong's? Uh -huh. And you find a word that you want to look up. And you have to go through thousands of them before you get exactly what you want. I had to go through one, at least 1,088 scriptures to pick these out. Right. What does that do for me? It edifies you. It does. I get to read my Bible all week long and not worry about whether I'm ahead or behind on this, these, these, these Bible studies because God begins to speak to me and that's what it, that's part of the uh, blessing He gives me to be able to teach you. Amen. Uh, I was talking about to, to a guy at work, he was having trouble studying his Bible. I says, the reason you have trouble studying your Bible is you have no plan. You have to have a plan to study your body. You can't just open it up and say, God's going to speak to me by opening it up. You might as well have tarot cards. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They will tell you what to do. You know, the Bible's not like that. God speaks to your heart. The Bible is just a guideline. And the thing is, is it, uh, that's why I like Sunday school or, or, or a study program that you get into. And like right now, we're studying word for word, line for line. That's the easiest way to study your Bible. Yes? Uh, you're up here in scripture, of course, not on your paper, but in uh, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 6, whosoever, that means men and women alike, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Right. That's right. So even to overcome sin, the only way to overcome sin is to abide in yeah. Amen. All right. So back to David. David told uh, Abiathar, and uh, Abiathar's name means father of abundance. But he told him to abide with David. Okay. And of, co of course, as we have studied, we know that God has told us implicitly that we need to abide and rest in Him and in His presence. Okay. Joyce, would you pass out fear not? Now, I did the next study on the word fear not. And, uh, of course, I'm still following the, uh, the verse 23 in 1 Samuel 22 where David told Abiathar, first he told him to abide with him, and the second thing he told him was to fear not. And very interesting thing that's in the King James Version I want to point out. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. That word fear not in the King James Version, can you guess how many times it was mentioned? 365. How did you know? <laughs> I don't know if you've known this or not, but I had an issue with fear. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we have a, we have a verse for every fear. single huh? day in the King James Bible that says fear not. Okay? Now, when I started going through these scriptures, there was more than 365 fears. There's 314 of them found using the word Yare. Yare is the word here where it says fear not. It actually says Yare Yad, and that means don't fear a hand. Okay, whatever that means. But that Yare Yad is what they always said in the Old Testament. So if you said fear not, you said Yare Yad. Uh, now, it was mentioned fear 188 times, 78 times afraid, 23 times terrible, 6 times terrible thing, 5 times dreadful, 3 times reverence, 2 times fearful, and 1 time terrible acts. Now, when I read these things, I concentrated on how uh, when God or God's people said fear not. Because there was a lot of other things about fearing God and fearing this and fearing that when you start going through these scriptures. Again, I'm going to want you all to pick out one or two of these scriptures. You can see I have them from Genesis to Revelation all the way. And this was a wonderful study. Uh, if you all take this piece of paper and look at all these up, they will speak to you. I am going to read them right now while you all are picking one out. Okay? Genesis 15.1, God speaks to Abraham. In Genesis 21.17, God speaks to Hagar saying, fear not. Okay, Each one of these scriptures, God says, fear not, or someone says it. Genesis 26, 24, God speaks to Isaac and tells him, fear not. God to Jacob in 46, 23. Exodus 14, 23, Moses says it to the Israelites. In Exodus 20, 20, God has come to prove you. Deuteronomy 1, 21, God possesses the land. 
God, God speaks to Joshua in, 30, in Deuteronomy 3, 21 and 22. Deuteronomy 20, 34, the priest of God addressed the Israelites saying, fear not. Deuteronomy 31, 6 through 8, Moses says it to Joshua. And here we find something interesting. Joshua receives that and he talks to, he, he, he brings it to, uh, that God speaks to Joshua, okay? And then God, and Mo, then Joshua speaks to the Israelites, see? So Moses speaks to Joshua, God speaks to Joshua, and Joshua brings the same message to the Israelites. And that's one of the things we got to know. When God speaks to us, we got to give it to somebody else. You know what I'm saying? We have to share that message. Jo uh, God spoke to Gideon. God spoke, David spoke to Solomon. God spoke to Je Jehoshaphat. Then we get to some scriptures of instruction. The Lord is my confidence in Proverbs 3, 25 and 26. God will strengthen me in Isaiah. Again in Isaiah, God is my redeemer. Isaiah 44, 2, God formed me in the womb. God 44, 8, no God but you. Isaiah 54, 4 and 5, I am not ashamed. 54, 14, established in righteousness. Lamentations 3, 57, you drew near. Daniel 10, 12, I come for thy words. Joel 2, 21 and 22, God, to the, God speaks to the land. And hey, guy, uh, there's a spirit covenant given, given. In Matthew 10, Jesus speaks to his disciples. In Matthew 28, an angel comes to Mary Magdalene. Jesus speaks it after the resurrection in Matthew 28. And in Luke 1, an angel speaks to Zacharias. In Luke 2, an angel speaks to shepherds. <laughs> I know this is long. In Luke 5, Jesus speaks to the sons of Zebedee. Zebedee. In Luke 8, Jesus tells his disciples only believe. In Luke 12, 7, it says, I am more valuable. Luke 12, 32, I have the kingdom. In Acts, it says, an angel spoke to Paul. In Romans, there's a spirit of adoption. In 2 Peter, uh, Timothy, there's a spirit of love. In Hebrews 13, He's our helper. In 1 John 4, there's perfect love. And in Revelation 17, 18, the Alpha and Omega speaks it. Okay, who's got a scripture to share? I do. All right, Norma. Although it's not one that you listed, it's one of my favorites. But it's close. It's Joshua 1 9. All right, Joshua 1 9. Yeah, you're going to find someone here that I didn't put on there. Well, keep in mind, this is like. Yeah. So it says, Joshua 1 9. Have I not commanded you, saying, Be strong and courageous, and do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. The Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Who's got something? Jo Joyce. Proverbs 3, 25 and 26. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Matthew 10, 26 through 31. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, Amen. and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak you in light. And what you hear in the ear, that preach you on the housetop. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows soul for a fathom, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear you not, therefore, you are more value than many sparrows. Amen. So why should we fear not? God's with us. Because Amen. God's with us, right? Amen. If He cares about the sparrows, <clears throat> and He cares about the hairs on your head, some men have less hair. We're all blessed <laughs> here. We all got hair. <laughs> Glory to God. Who else? Who else got a scripture? Go ahead, Mary. Uh, Isaiah 43, 1 through 5. God is my redeemer. But now, Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you, says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. 
For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt a ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia a, a Seba in your place. Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored and I love you. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will gather you and your children from east and west. Amen. You are precious to the Lord. That's a wonderful, wonderful scripture there. Who else has got them? Yes. Senator, go ahead. Deuteronomy 1.21, Possess the land. See, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go up, take possession as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has told you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Amen. You know, that's important. Last week I spoke about our sphere of influence. Maybe been a couple weeks ago. But, but, uh, and God would in, in, enlarge our coast. And uh, when he does that, we need to realize that Look at how the United States is right now, how Satan is trying to take over our land. We should seize this land. We should pray and, and, and proclaim it to the heavens that this is God's property. We keep saying that this, this is not a Christian nation anymore. It is a Christian nation because we're here. That's right. We're still here. They can't make it so it's not a Christian nation anymore. We need to start speaking out, you know. I'm just as guilty as everyone else. Okay, who else? Joyce. I got 2 Timothy 2, uh, 1, 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Amen. You've got to give us spirit of fear. Not... Go ahead. 1 John 4 and 18. There is no fear in love. There is no fear. But perfect love casteth out fear. For fear has to do with punishment and whoever fears has not been perfectly in, perfected in love. Amen. That's good. Who else? Anybody want to share some more here before we go on? Because I'm not going to have time to finish one more one, one more of these. But that's okay. Uh, one thing I noticed, I, I want somebody to look up Joel 2, 21 and 22 for We'll do those, that one, and maybe Haggai, Haggai 2. Who's got Joel 1, 2, 21, and 22 for me? Joel, fear, fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, <clears throat> for the Lord has done great things. Fear not, you beast of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and vine give their full yield. <clears throat> I think it's interesting that God speaks to the land. Amen. Here we are. Uh, did y'all see the spill up there where the Environmental Protection Agency was trying to uh, mm -hmm. do something in that mine up north and it released all that toxic waste mm -hmm. into the water? You know, the EPA is supposed to be protecting us from those things. There's nothing that can protect <laughs> this earth. But God. And God is telling the earth, no, don't fear. Don't fear. He's going to make it blossom. He's going to make it come to pass. Make it come forth. Okay, I want to also look up the Spirit Covenant. Haggai 2.5. Haggai 2.5. You got it, Joyce? Yeah. According to the word that I covenant. Yeah, thank you. With you when you ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you. Is that the way you think? Yeah, that's it. Do you see that when, when they came out of Egypt, God made a spirit covenant with them that his spirit wouldn't leave them? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. God makes a spirit covenant with us. Amen. He gives us a covenant that we we can be in his presence because of the Holy Spirit. Okay, well. We're going to go ahead and close there. Next week, uh, we're going to study, continue that one verse. We've still got, uh, He that seeks my life seeks your life. Yes. And